Good day, our dear students. Welcome back to another English session for Upper Basic Schools. Our last lesson we discussed tenses. And I believe that now you have understood and you can use very well tenses accordingly. I'm hoping that you are no longer saying, I go to school yesterday. Instead, you are saying, I went to school yesterday. Equally, I also believe that you are no longer saying, I have completed my work, but you will be saying, I have completed my work. Good. Today, we're going to look at another topic, which is question tag. As you know, in English, we have different type of questions. Among them is double H question that requires answers. We also have yes or no question, which also requires answers. Again, question tag is another form of question, but it doesn't require an answer like the other types of question. For instance, if I ask you, what's your name? I would expect you to tell me, my name is Fat. Otherwise, I may ask you, is your father a banker? You may answer yes, he is a banker, or no, he is not a banker, he's a doctor. But question tag, does not require such answers. Now you will ask me, why do we use then question tag? Since it does not require any answer. Now you can look at here. Question tag is a question placed at the end of a statement or a command. It normally appears after a comma and ends with a question mark. Is that enough? No. We use that question to ask for confirmation. As a result, we don't need any answer. We just use it to ask for confirmation or to ascertain something. Look at the example we have. Modu is our head boy. Isn't he? Here, you are not asked to give any answer. But then, the purpose of this question is to confirm or to ascertain. You know very well, you are in the same school. And Modu is the head boy. All right? So saying Modu is, the, is our head boy does not mean that you don't know. But you are just using such question to ascertain or to confirm. So we say, question tag normally comes after a comma in a statement. This is why when you look at this statement here, Modu is our head boy. This is the statement. After the end of the statement, you have a comma. After the comma, the question tag comes. Isn't he? Number two, you are hungry. Aren't you? All right. So for you to understand question tag better, you need to look at the rules that govern the formation of question tag, which include the following. If you want to understand question tag, and you apply them accordingly, grammatically, then follow the rules. What are the rules? We have them here on the board, and you can look at them, and you apply them. Rule number one, positive statement goes with negative question tag. Example, the dress is white. Isn't it? Now. How do you know that the statement is positive or is negative? How do you know that? Look at this. 
A statement is positive when it does not contain the negator. What are the negators? Not, never, hardly, or no. Any statement that does not have any of these words, that statement is a positive statement. Therefore, the third question in that case must be in the negative. You understand that there should be an opposite between the statement and the question tag. That the statement is positive, the tag is negative. The statement is negative, the tag is positive. Get our examples on the board. She was happy. It's positive. This tells you that the person was happy. So our third question is, wasn't she? You can see, wasn't she? Number two, you will go to school early, won't you? Number three, Amy has finished her work, hasn't she? Right? So you can see all the statements given are all in positive. The attack questions are in negative form. Now we move on to rule number two. Rule number two states negative statement goes with positive question tag. They are opposite. A negative statement is one that contains a negator. Now remember, you were told that Positive statements don't contain negator, but negative statements would actually contain them. What are they? No, never, not, hardly. Examples. You are not happy. If you look at the example here, it's in the negative. You are not happy. OK? But because of the construction here, you don't pronounce as you are not. So how do you pronounce it? You aren't. Not aren't, as some of you used to pronounce. OK? You said, you aren't happy. Are you? So you see, if you look at the third question, it does not have any negative. It's in the positive. Why? Because the statement is negative. So you cannot say, you aren't happy, aren't you? You cannot say that. If you do that, you will have double negative. And you cannot use double negative in question tag. Good. So we look at example two. She doesn't like me. If you look at here, it's negative. All right? This apostrophe takes the place of O. And when it was there, it would have been, she does not. And you are told that a statement is negative when it contains negator. And not is an element of negator. So when you have it in your statement, it cannot be repeated in the question tag. So we say, she doesn't have, she doesn't like me. The question tag should be, does she? You cannot say, doesn't she. If you say that, it will be double negative. And double negative is not allowed. And you cannot use it in question tag. We move on. The children don't help their mother. You can see the children don't help their mother. Do they? The statement here is in the negative form. The same thing comes, the teacher was not in the class. Because of this not, of course, is an element of negator. So the third question should be positive. You cannot say, wasn't he? Example five, Mr. Ba is not the principal. Not negative, third question should be positive. Is he? Now we look at rule number three. 
The statement and the question tag should be in the same tense. Good. Our last lesson, we talked about tense, which is time. You all understand, verb tense. So this tells you that if the statement is in the present tense, the tag question must be in present tense. But when the statement is in the past tense, the question tag must also be in past tense. I guess you understand that. That's what it means. The statement and the question should be in the same tense, meaning that they should agree in tense. You cannot have your statement in present tense and your tag questions in past tense. There's no agreement. So take note. Demba and Lamin are my friends. If you look at A, uh, it's in the past tense. It's in the present tense. So the third question should be in present tense. What do we say? And they? As I told you earlier, don't pronounce as are in they. Give the right pronunciation. And they? Demba and Lamin are in present tense, my friends. So your third question should also be in present tense. That will give you, and they? We move on. She is my sister. She is my sister. Positive statement, and in present tense. So our third question should be, isn't she? We cannot say, wasn't she? No, it will not, it will not match because is is present and was is past. And you are told that if the statement, the statement and the question should be in the same tense. We move on. The boy was not in the house. You can see was in the past and was here also in the past. You cannot say the boy was not in the house. You say, is he? Can you? No. If you do that, there will be no agreement in tense. There will be no agreement in tense between the statement and the question tag. Let's look at number four. My father went to Banjul. Didn't he? Now, you cannot say, doesn't he? Because when is in the past tense, and there has to be agreement. The statement should agree with the question tag in tense. If this one is in the past, here must be in the past. If this one in the present, this must also be in the present tense. We say, my father went to Banjul. Didn't he? Not doesn't he? Because the statement is put in past tense. Is that good? Now we move on to rule number four. When the verb phrase comprises, stop. Off, off should go. When the verb phrase comprises, mm, off, off should go. More than one verb. Good. Um, let's look at number four. When the verb phrase comprises more than one verb, the first verb in the verb phrase is used to form the question tag. That simply means that in your statement, if you have two verbs, the first one should always be used to form the question tag. Let's get the example here. The man should have read the book. What are the two verbs here? Should plus have. So in this case, what do you do? According to the rule, when the verb phrase comprises more than one verb, the first verb. So what are the two verbs, should and have? 
which one comes first? Suit. So if you want to form your question tag, then you repeat that one. What do you say? Shouldn't he? You cannot say haven't because it is not the first verb in the sentence. Good? Let's get this. I will come. How many verbs? Two. Will and come. In this case, you use the first verb according to the rule. And the rule says always use the first verb. So don't stress yourself. I will come. What do you say? Won't I? So will will always change to won't. So take note, it will not change to willn't, like here you have should, shouldn't. We move on. My brother is studying at the university. What are the two verbs? Is and studying. So you cannot use this one, studying, because the rule says use the first verb. Always reflect on the rules. It will help you. So you have the two verbs, is and studying. So what do you do? Use is to form your tag question. How are you going to do it? Reflect back to the previous rules that the statement is in the positive. Then the question tag should be in negative. So what do you say? Is it he? Good? I hope it's simple. Right, we move on. When the statement contains only lexical verb, that's, that means if there's no auxiliary verb in the sentence, only main verb, the following verbs are used to form question tag. Let's get here. We have this suit as an auxiliary verb, will as auxiliary verb, and is as an auxiliary verb. We use them to form question tag. But let's take examples that sentences that don't have any of the auxiliary verb, but they have only main verb. How do you form their question tag? If you want to form their question tag, use the following word. Does, do, doesn't, done, did, and didn't. Does is singular, positive, when the statement is negative. And do is positive, plural, when the statement is negative. Doesn't, singular, negative, when the statement is positive. Don't. Plural negative when the statement is negative is positive. Did past ten both singular and plural positive. Didn't past ten both singular and plural. So in your statement, if you didn't see any auxiliary verb that you can repeat, but only main verb, focus on these verbs to form your question tag. Let's get this. He walks, he walks to school. You see, there has no auxiliary verb. In that case, you cannot say, isn't he? You don't say that. You cannot also say, wasn't he? If you look at this, it says, he walks to school. Now, which one are you going to use to form the third question? Can you use this? No. Why? Because the statement is positive. And you are told that when the statement is positive, the tag question must be negative. Now, we're going for negative now. Can you use don't? No. Why? Because this is singular. And you are told that don't is plural. Can you see? Now, he walks to school. Can you say did? No. Because you were told that there should be agreement between the tenses. The tense in the statement should agree with the tense in the question tag. So if you choose did, it wouldn't work because this is in simple present tense and singular. So among these words, you're going to look at the word which is singular and 
which word also is in the negative form because the statement is in positive form. Therefore, we're going for this one, doesn't. When you say he walks to school, doesn't he? Example two, they walk to school. Now you can look at this. Walks, walk. The only difference is the S. And it's very significant. With the S, singular. Without S, plural. And the entire statement here is positive. So we're going for a negative tag. What is the negative tag? Don't. You cannot use didn't. Why? Because this is in the present tense. So when it is in the present tense, you cannot use a past tense. We move on. Ida and Ami went to the market yesterday. So we can see there has no auxiliary verb here. We have only main verb, which is when. In the past. All right? So we're going to look at which of these is in the past tense. We come here, didn't. Why? Because the statement is in the positive form. And you were told that positive statements attract negative question tag. Is that good? Let's move on. Number six, positive commands go with positive question tags. You can see, it's now getting you some opposite. Positive commands go with positive question tag to lay emphasis on the statement. When you say to lay emphasis, it's to put emphasis or to give more emphasis on the statement that we are talking about. So let's get this. Please, leave my office. You see, you know, leave my office is a command. But what makes the command now positive? Because you have the word please. Without the word please, this is going to be a command. Nothing like positive. It could be a very negative command. But the moment you decide to use please, leave my office, of course, we are given command. With the please, in fact, we are given command, but in a very polite manner. This is why we said positive commands. Go with positive question tags to lay emphasis on the statement. Now, in this case, you say, will you? You don't say, won't you? Exceptions are here. All right? You were told earlier that positive statements takes negative question tag, but not in all circumstances. In this case, when the statement is in command and the command is in positive, of course, it takes positive tag question. Let's look at example two. Let's go. Apostrophe S, let us. But because it's contracted, you will not say let us but you say, let's go, all right? So it's positive. So the tag question should be, shall we? Is that good? We move on. Now, we look at this. The pronoun in the tag must match with the noun in the statement. You know in English, pronouns take the place of a noun in a sentence, all right? In question tag, the same thing applies. But the pronouns that you're going to use must match, must agree with the noun in the statement. Let's get the example. Fatma and Aisha are friends. What do we say? Aunt, she? No. If you do that, it wouldn't match because she is singular. And here you have Fatu and Aisa, compound subject, which is plural, obviously. What do you say? And they? Good. So we look at example number two. The students didn't write exams. 
the day. So this day must agree with the subject or with the noun used here, which is plural form. You cannot say, did he? Because he is singular and students here is plural. And you are told that the pronouns in the tag must match the noun in the statement. We move on. Monkeys live in the bush. Monkeys, plural pronouns, replaced by plural nouns, replaced by the pronouns they. What do we say? Don't they? We move on. The book was not found on the table. The book was not found on the table. Negative statement. The third question obviously is positive. So what do you say? Was it? So you cannot say was he or was he or was they. There must be agreement. We look at number five. The baby was sick. Wasn't it? Baby, of course, human, but it takes it. Why? Because it's a neutral gender. So it cannot take the pronouns he or she. You say the baby was crying because it was hungry. Not he was hungry, except if you qualify the baby. The baby boy was crying because he was hungry. But when you stop at the word baby alone, the pronoun is always it. So take note. If you say the baby was sick, your question tag cannot be was in she, because we didn't know the gender of the baby. So since we did not know the gender of the baby, then it takes the pronoun it. Is that good? Now let's move on. Good. When, the, when a statement begins with I am, the question tag is always anti. When your statement begins with I am, your tag question should always be and I. Example, I am a student, aren't I? I am a teacher. And I, I am a bank manager, and I, I am a tailor, and I. So anytime your statement begins with I am, your third question should always be this. Simple. Let's move on. Good. When the first verb in the statement is must or mustn't, the question tag may take either must mustn't, or need, needn't. All right, example, he must have done the job. Now, look at this. He must have done the job. What is going to be our third question? Mustn't. Why? The statement is positive. We move on. Ali mustn't go home now. Our third question is, need he? Although you may use must he, but then need is more appropriate to use. All right? We move on. The patient needs some medication. Needn't he? You may ask the gender of the patient. Of course, it's fine. <laughs> you can either use needn't he or needn't she, but it cannot take it. It cannot take it. That it that I discuss is only restricted to babies, if you are referring to human. So here is fine, we didn't know the gender of the patient. Well, of course, we assume that it's a male, so we said needn't he. Otherwise, you could have said needn't she. It's okay, but you cannot say it. The it is only restricted to babies. We move on. You need not to be there. Need you? Because here I say need, need. Because of this not in the negative, 
your statement is in the positive. Good. Need is considered more appropriate in the formation of question tag when the negative form of most is used. Most is used. That is mozint. It's the first verb in the statement. Okay? We move on. Now, let us look at the summary of our lesson. Number one, positive statements go with negative question tags. Example, you are my brother, aren't you? Fat looks beautiful, doesn't she? Uncle Omar went to the market. Didn't he? Negative statement go with positive question tag. We said a negative statement is one that contains a negative no, no, never, not, hardly. Number three, the statement in the question tag should be in the same tense. When your statement is in present tense, your question tag should be in present tense. For example, he knows my father's name, doesn't he? We look at this other one. When the verb phrase comprises more than one verb, the first verb in the verb phrase is used to form the question tag. Let's get that. He is teaching English. You have a verb phrase, is teaching. Therefore, the first verb, which is is, should be repeated to form the third question. We say, he is teaching English. Isn't he? Is that good? We move on. Rule number five, when the statement contains only lexical verbs, the following verbs are used to form the question tag. Does, do, doesn't, don't, did, and didn't. As we explain, does is singular, positive, do plural positive, doesn't, singular negative, don't, plural negative, did, past tense, positive, both singular and plural, didn't, negative, both past, both singular and plural. Good. Positive commands go with positive questions, tags to lay emphasis on the statement. The pronoun in the third question must match the noun in the statement. For instance, you cannot say the girl cooked the lunch. You say, didn't he? If you do that, it wouldn't match because he as pronounced does not match the noun, the girl. So you cannot say, didn't he, but you should say, didn't she. All right, we move on. When a statement begins with I am, the question tag is aren't I? I am your teacher, aren't I? I am your best friend, aren't I? I am your classmate, aren't I? Good, we move on. When the first verb in the statement is must, mustn't, the question tag may take either must, mustn't, or need, needn't. Right. Good. So we have a classwork here to do to test whether you have understood the lessons or not. Now, let's do the work and we see. I'm um, reading instruction. Choose the right question tag to complete the following statement. You are given statements here, of course, complete statements, but then use a question tag to complete them. So you have question tags in the bracket. Isn't it, is it. Use one of them to complete the statement. Number one, the dress is white. Which one do we take? Good. We take this? No. Why? The statement is positive. And the rule says that 
When this statement is positive, you take a negative. You understand? Move on. You aren't happy. Aren't you? Are you? Which one is the correct one? This one? No. Why? Because your statement is negative already. So when the statement is negative, the tag cannot be negative. It must be opposite. Now you come here. Are you? We'll get you the right answer. Can you move on? All right. This is my sister. Look at it. She is my sister. Isn't she? Wasn't she? Which one do we take? This one? Or oh, both of them are correct? Because this is negative, this is negative. No. Why? Because this one is in the past tense, while the statement is in the present tense. And you were told that the, sta the, the tense in the statement must match with the tense in the question. As a result, you cannot use this one, even though it's in the positive form. Likewise, if this was, she was my sister, fine, then this would have been the correct one. But because the statement is in the present, we expect you to use Ishin she, with no doubt. We move on. My brother is studying at the university. Doesn't he? Isn't he? Good. Both are negative, and the statement is positive. How would you figure out the correct one? You look at the rules. What did the rule say? The rule says, if your statement contains verb phrase, the first verb should be used in the sentence. Now, you're going to look at the statement whether there's a verb phrase or not. My brother is studying. Of course, there is. Where is it? Is and studying. So you don't stress yourself. You just choose, isn't he? We move on. He walks to school. Isn't he? Doesn't he? A positive statement. But then both tags are in negative form. So which one are you going to choose? We take this because that's what we did here. No. They are different. Why? Because in this statement, there is nothing like an auxiliary verb that you may repeat in your tag question. You only have a main verb, which is works. And you were told that if you have only main verb in your statement, you use the verbs like does, do, don't, does it, etc. So here we come, we choose this one. Doesn't he? Let's continue. Good. Let's go home. Let's look at it very well. Don't we? Shall we? We're going for don't we because there is no auxiliary verb or it's only main verb? No. The rule says when you say let's go, the third question should be shall we? Hmm? Okay. The baby was sick. Wasn't it? Wasn't she? Which one? This one? No. Because you were told that you did not know the gender of the baby. And once the gender is not known, you take the pronouns it. So don't stress yourself. Simple as that. I am a tailor. I'm not. And I? You were told that statement start with I am takes the question tag and I. So follow the rules, you get the work correctly done. Good. Um, that's the end of our lesson. But then I'll leave this assignment with you. And I'm hoping that you will work on it before the next class. 
So read the instructions and you answer the questions. Form the right question tag to the following statements. We are friends. Give us the right question tag. The dog barks all night. Banjul is the capital of the Gambia. Teachers were helping the students. Modu student have come. You need to go. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best. As I always advise you, stay at home. Don't go away. Focus on your TV. Study your books. And then always wash your hands as much as possible. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thanks. Bye.